captured in the pages of over 80 books. The illustrations of the Sermbart Festival of Nuremberg are a visual feast of inspiration for the historical costumer, from the colorful to the extreme to the downright bizarre. Come along with us as we explore the pages that illustrate the stunning visuals and radical fashions of this German Renaissance tradition. Hello, I'm Elena and I'm one half of Thimble and Plume. We are longtime reenactors with a passion for German Renaissance clothing, and this channel is our way of sharing the things that we've learned over the years with you. And usually we do videos about sewing tips, tricks, and techniques, and how to level up your clothing, but today we decided to do something a little different uh, in celebration of Halloween we decided we're going to share some inspiration with you. So the illustrations that we're going to be looking at today are from the Shembart books, and these books have fascinated me from the moment I first laid eyes on them. Uh, so we hope you enjoy this video, and as you're watching, let us know in the comments which one is your favorite. There are over 80 of these Shembart books surviving today, and they describe and illustrate the events, attendance, and costumes of the Nuremberg Shrovetide Festival, or Shembart Carnival, which started in 1449 and continued well into the 16th century. Each book describes the same events, and while they are very faithful in detail, they do take some artistic license in how they are represented. But it remains true that with the turning of each page, a colorful and dramatic pageant unfolds. Legend has it that it began as a privilege granted by Emperor Charles IV to the Butcher's Guild of Nuremberg, which started out as a dance. Later, in 1449, the butchers were joined by other patricians in a yearly celebration on Shrovetide, where they could wear Shembart masks, dance, perform fencing matches, and parade through town. Along with music, song, food, and drink, the carnival featured speakers who poked fun at politicians, persons of powers, and policies of the government. The parades could contain anywhere between 22 and 100 people. The parade and the dancers were protected by a runner called a lofer, whose performance gradually came to be the main event. They often wore smooth masks and newly made and extravagantly designed costumes in the style of the current fashion, often decorated with embroidery, ribbons, and bells that jingled as they ran through the streets. This illustration from the third Shembart parade with 24 participants depicts the Laufer Andoni Daller. His costume has a meat cleaver, bells, and a rack of cured herring. Each Laufer can be recognized by his coat of arms illustrated next to his costume. Heinrich Rummel, in 1458, dressed in a party color red and white suit with an applique of a cleaver on his chest and a row of bells sewn along his hips. And Hauptmann Heinz Height, in 1461, wrapped bells around his leg and arm. And here is Nicol Zenner in 1459. And if you take the time to study the details, you'll see not only an amazing amount of neatly tied red points and detailed bells, but also a small row of buttons along his front. Though many theories revolve around the prospect of men running around year after year beating each other with an artichoke, the green bundle you see is made out of tightly and neatly bound leaves known as Lebensstrut and often concealed fireworks, as illustrated here. In 1497, Ludwig Klingenstein, a knife maker and fencing master, wears a blue suit indented with yellow, giving the effect of a burst of light. He also wears a belt of bells around his waist and one knee, as well as a laurel wreath on his head. This year, the knife makers performed an elaborate sword dance as part of the festivities. This 1493 runner wears a striking black and white vertical striped ensemble with slashed sleeves and bells around one knee. This striking fellow of 1521 is daring in his all-white wands and hose with pops of green showing through his slashes, and one leg decked out in the colors of the rainbow. Then, in 1524, this dapper laufer wears a party-color hosen and wands of yellow on one half, with red and white stripes on the opposite. You can even see the green of his underhose peeking through the slashes. Over the years, the event took on a more subversive tone, and from the last quarter of the 15th century, the parade evolved, allowing other patricians to participate with their own elaborate costumes. New moving sleds, or wagons, paraded through the streets of Nuremberg. These Hollen used symbolic figures to represent deadly sins and contained scenes that represented allegorical, infernal, or diabolical subjects. 
This sled of a battle elephant and castle has fireworks shooting from cannons and the elephant's trunk. Here is a sled with a castle manned by four fools and a devil throwing stones. In this oddly specific flow, an ornate cannon is firing out an old woman. And this elaborate display of a ship of fools seen floating on actual water. Here is a sledge with a man-eating giant standing in a castle with a child in each hand. Two additional figures are being cooked. and We can assume the one looking out of the door below is trying to find a way to escape his own fate. The floats could contain dozens of people, like this scene of the court of Venus with noblemen and noblewomen feasting with musicians and clowns surrounded by bushes. On top of a tree, a horned musician plays a shawm. And in 1516, they decided to build a gigantic devil eating an old woman. I wonder what they had against old women. The lawfer would also be accompanied by others dressed in costumes of allegorical figures and images of vice. Here we see the popular wild man and woman in costume made out of branches of fir, some with strategically placed naked spots. Apparently, nudity became an issue in some years and the city council had to ban the display of full frontal male nudity. And in the demon category, we have a large bird-like creature with handbells and a horn slung around its chest. Or this fellow with a costume made out of bear fur, a pig mask, a belt of bells at his waist, and carrying a small figure of a fool. But make sure to pay attention to this cool detail of lacing on the inside of his hose. Laced hose like these ensure a very, very tight fit. Covered in ribbon loops from head to shoe, one wonders just how many yards and yards and yards it took to complete this fine fellow's elaborate ensemble. This classy lad will be the talk of this town in this sassy suit of yellow with blue stars and a belt made entirely of bells. And this chap was shaking his tail feather about 500 years before it became a thing. And I don't even want to know how long it took to attach all these dolls to the clothes of this fetching fellow. And is this just nuts or what? Chestnuts, that is, from neck to knee on this fellow. I see he likes his hose and painted on, too. Someone's going to be sinning tonight with this costume made out of letters of indulgence complete with pendant seals. And let us not forget this card shark ready to deal a winning hand. But all good things must come to an end, and the carnival saw its last year in 1539 when influential pastor Andreas Osiander complained about his likeness being paraded about on a float depicting him playing backgammon and surrounded by fools and devils. And in this depiction of its final year, we see the Laufer wearing his fetching white and gold Pluterhosen and wams, bells around his knees, and a feathered wing in his hat, leading in... Oh, what is this? <laughs> it's an illustration of a float with devils and fools, and a man holding an amazingly detailed backgammon board recorded in ink and surviving for all to see some 500 years later. I'll bet that party pooper never saw that coming. Weren't those amazing? So which one was your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. We know it's a little bit different from what we normally do, uh, but we thought it would be a fun little jaunt of inspiration for you. Let us know if you'd like to see more inspirational videos like this. And also make sure to subscribe and sign up for notifications. Have a great day and happy Halloween.